Well, first of all, could I check if the microphone works? Because there is no light. I, w I just wonder if it works. Does it? At the end of the hall, can you hear me? OK, thank you. Well, I think I have to begin with a confession. And then the confession is this, which is that I'm here in order to sell a product. And then the product, product is G20 Summit meeting to take place in Seoul in November. And then I arrived very late yesterday, yesterday morning. And then I was sitting through the session whole day yesterday. And, th and then sitting through the meeting, I just came to have this, which is that this is my confession, which is that my job of selling my product has become, in a sense, easier, but in a sense, more difficult. It became far easier because I was listening to you. And then there were so many references to the issues we are discussing in the G20. So that way, I really do not have to say too much. But at the same time, it became far more difficult for me. Why? Because I came to find that there is such high expectation about things to be achieved through the G20 process. So for that reason, I really feel that this, uh, well, if I put up, uh, well, make a choice between easier and then more difficult, then I have to say it became far more difficult. So that, that is my confession. So what I'm going to tell you about is how Korea is preparing for the G20 meeting in November. And then my president has been to World Economic Forum in January this year. He was raised the, exactly the same question. And then he said three things. First, we will focus upon implementation of the agreements which have been made so far. Second, he said, given the nature, the changing nature of the G20, we will try to introduce a certain limited number of new issues for the G20 process. Third, he said, since we designated G20 as premier forum for international economic cooperation, it is, it is not, an, uh, not a process which is limited just to the 20 countries. Now, it should be able to do something for 192 countries around the world. So he said, we will put more emphasis on outreach activities. So they were the three points which my president made. And I think I will just try to follow the same uh, three, three pillars. So the first pillar, as I told you, is with respect to implementation of the agreements. And then as I have already told you, I was listening to you. And then we had ex extensive and very intensive discussions about the issues we have to discuss through the G20 summit in Seoul. For example, yesterday, we were talking a lot about macroeconomic coordination which for the time being is being done through something called uh, Pittsburgh Framework. And then we have been talk talking about global imbalance. We have been talking about exchange rate. We have been talking about structural reform, et cetera, et cetera. And then with respect to framework, what I truly think is this, which is that it is something on which it is far easier to agree on the principle and then far more difficult to implement the, the details of what we intended to do through the framework. So that's there. And second major homework would be reform of financial regulations. And then I think, uh, well, with respect to reform of financial regulations, then Basel Committee, as well as, as well as Financial Stability Board, have been working very hard. And then yesterday, we were listening to Mr. Trichet. And then he was, uh, he was telling us about Basel III, the progress we are making through, through the Basel Committee, as well as uh, what uh, we plan to do for he continued to say systematic, systematically important banks, but it has a full name, which is systematically important financial institutions, which we call sci-fis. So that work is being done by uh, Financial Stability Board. And then they are the kind of things which G20 leaders agreed in Toronto to have, uh, completed, to have completed before the Seoul Summit in November. So, so that's the second major element of the first pillar. Third major element would be reform of international financial institutions to start from IMF. And of course, the reform of financial institutions is a huge issue, major issue. And then there are a large number of issues that, that we are discussing for the time being. But for the time being, I think there is one issue which is being perceived in the public perception as a make or break issue. And then there is if we will be able to make the shift for shift a uh, 5% shift of IMF quota from overrepresented countries to underrepresented countries. So we are working very hard upon that. Third and last element of the first pillar, that is to say I'm still working on uh, the homework for the G20, is trade. And then with respect to trade, there were three important issues we have been dealing with through the G20 process. 
One was how to deal with uh, protectionism because the lessons we have from the 1930s was when things go bad, then there is natural tendency for governments to have recourse to protectionist measures. And then so far as that is concerned, I think we have been okay. And then yesterday I was listening closely to uh, Mr. Kemal Davis, and then what he said was that the presence of OMC, WTO, l'OMC, he was speaking in French, so the, the presence of l'OMC, maybe it was responsible for a large measure for the fact that we, in fact, have not uh, uh, seen too many, uh, say, uh, protectionist measures taking place over the last two years, and I think he's absolutely right. So OMC, uh, WTO was helpful, but at the same time, what G20 leaders have done was helpful as well. Well, as a matter of fact, G20 leaders declared uh, standstill agreement, and then as a matter of fact, I personally saw to it that there was a sufficient monitoring mechanism for the standstill declaration, and I think uh, in addition to the presence of WTO, the fact that we had that declaration, standstill declaration, as well as sufficient and efficient monitoring mechanism at, at the G20, I think they, were, they played a major role in uh, seeing to it that protectionism has been kept at bay. And the second issue, which has been dealt with by the G20, in order to promote trade, it was trade financing. And again, many of you would remember that G20 leaders agreed on providing $250 billion of trade financing, and then that was the agreement made in London. And then as a matter of fact, uh, as the present counting goes, it was far more than $250 billion new, new money which was uh, put into the system through the G20 uh, leaders' agreement on that particular point. But there is one issue which has been, uh, I have to say, uh, lagging behind. And then I said to myself, it's very curious. As I sat through all those meetings yesterday, I said to myself, it was very, very curious in the sense that nobody has ever mentioned about DDA. So it seems to be the case that DDA seems to have just got up, got out of your list of important issues for the international community. But at the same time, it is still there. DDA is still there. And then time and again, G20 leaders have uh, reaffirmed their commitment to seeing to it that the G uh, DDA negotiation will be completed in time and then come out with ambitious and balanced outcome, et cetera, et cetera. So it has developed into a tantra, but a mantra or tantra. But at the same time, so far, we have not seen a real substantive progress and then we look upon it as a, as a major challenge as we prepare for the G20 summit in Korea.